Hey everyone, welcome back to Crown Corner, the channel where we dive into the wild world of entitled people and their unbelievable stories. Hope you enjoy it. And without further ado, let's go. This happened yesterday. This is a repost from entitled parents. I'm getting a restraining order on the family I'm doing a little better, and I know that they were correct in that it was a PTSD episode. Run the crap shout. This happened like nine hours ago. My English is not the best, so I apologize. I don't know if PTSD episode is the right wording for it because I don't know what the FBI was going through because I had one before and I didn't feel like that, but everyone else said it was someone can correct me, that'll be okay. This is the shortest I can make. My boss, aka my uncle-in-law, and I were early shopping for Thanksgiving. When we were done, my boss forgot something and went back to get it, and I sat down on the bench to play Stardust. As I was trying to fish for a lava eel, two people sat down on each side of me. I looked up and noticed it was my dad and my stepmom in front of me was my brother. My heart fell out of my ass. If you haven't read the stories about my twin sister, you know that my sister is my father's and stepmother's golden child and my father's other children hated my sister so badly that they took their hatred for her out on me. I became scared. I tried to get up, but both my sperm donor and his crack grabbed me and put me back down. They proceeded to dig their nails into my skin and whisper really screwed up crap into my ear. They used to do that to me as a child as a torture method when we were in public. They're telling me how I was useless, that I was ungrateful, and that I would be giving my sister my money, and I'm disgusting it. I'm the most mentally fragile out of my father's children, and with my autism, you could screwed me up easily. As they dug their nails to my skin until I bleed, my brain shouted at me. I... I... Did you forget you're pregnant? Protect your crap. So I bit my stepmother and smacked my dad with my Stylo 5. I tried to book it, but I didn't get too far because my brother grabbed me by my wrist. The way he grabbed me immediately put me into a PTSD episode. I started apologizing and I said that I was sorry... Then I started begging for help, screaming for my boss to save me because he's my safety shield. The employees tried to intervene, but my dad told them that they caught me stealing, then my dad slapped me in the face for breaking the law deeper into the PTSD episode I got. So many bad memories came flooding back, and as my brother reached for my face, that I thought he was trying to hurt me again. My good brother, the one I like, gave me a pocket knife to carry around with me. I recently found it again, and I've jammed that mother tucker right in the a-hole of a brother's hand. I don't remember what happened afterwards because I crawled up into a ball and lost my crap. My boss helped me out of what the hell I was going through. He, the only man who can touch me when I'm losing my mind. After I came to, I told them what happened and I feared for my life. Well, long story short, my family got arrested. I have a sprained wrist and I have scars on my body from where they dug their nails into my skin. But the one thing that pissed me off the most out of all this bullcrap, my twin sister called me. Calling me out of my name because I got daddy arrested, I'm not okay. I keep flinching every time fiancé try to reach for me, and I'm heartbroken, and my witch of a sister is worried about damn father and my stepmom and not me. I was the one who was assaulted. I'm the victim here. What the hell? The funniest part about it, she wants me to pay their bail. I'm going to talk to my therapist in the morning. This is definitely a setback, and I'm constantly in fight or flight mode. My mother wants to cut a witch. I think it's hilarious when the French lady gets so angry. My true family is by my side and I'm going to be okay. Eventually, I just don't know when. I'm not in the right mindset, so I don't know how to end this. I'm sorry. Update. Hello, this is an update to this rent because I can't find my journals and I'm currently using Reddit to share my stress. My English is not the best, so I'm sorry. You have a warning that's going to be screwed up. My life... This is the short version of it. My twin and I were born in France. We live with our mother and our oldest are two siblings. I thought my twin sister hated me since the day that I can remember, but the more I think about it, the more I realize it wasn't the case. We were inseparable at first. She loved me. I think it started when we spent the first couple months in Egypt with my dad and his family. My father was a wealthy man. I don't know what he did, but he made a lot of money for it. I don't know when it started, but one day my lovely father started treat me like trash, while his wife and he treated my twin sister like royalty. I still don't know what's the difference between my sister and I, but they loved her more than me, and eventually my twin sister started hating me too. 
My twin sister and I will spend five months of the year. Oh my God, those months were the worst months of my life. They treated me so badly, they would give me garbage and my twin sister got diamond. Then my family neglect, emotional, and verbal abuse turned into physical abuse. My dad and stepmom started hitting me. They started torturing me for things I didn't do. I have a fear of hot stoves, the dark and talking in from the other people because of them. It wasn't just them. My dad, other children, let's call them Witch, Dick, and Pablo, started torturing me as well. I got along with Pablo, because he always felt our father's wrath, but Witch and Dick started hitting me as well. They hated my twin sister so much, but they couldn't do anything about it because the guy would beat the crap out of them, so they turned their hatred towards me. They legit torture me by, trying to hang within power cord, trying to drown me, force me to eat bugs, and killing my cat in front of me, Rip Aimer. You dislike everyone, but you dislike me the least. Then they started torturing me in other ways. The physically psychological abuse turned into sexual. I had a really, really, really screwed up memories of Witch and Dick helping me down and taking turns, and I have a memory of my stepmom walking in, saw what children was doing to me, turned around, and walked away. Then she beat the crap out of me and threatened not to tell. My twin sister started sexually assaulting as was, but thankfully it didn't last. I remember the day I started fighting back. I think I was about eight when my stepmother was beating Pablo for wearing her lipstick. Then something just snapped. I grabbed a virus and threw it at her back. Then I started wailing on her. I got my ass beat on my dad for that, but it was worth it since that day I started fighting back, but only if someone had pushed me to my limit or when someone was hurting someone I loved. I don't fight back anymore. I'm trying to get back in that mindset, but I will stab witch to protect my family. Eventually, my family moved to America and my father and his family followed. My dad didn't help when my family was starving. He only gave food to my twin sister. He didn't care my family beings broke. He only gave my twin sister money. He didn't care that I got sick and almost died. He only paid attention to my twin sister. So why should I bring this up? It's over. My father said mother and brother was charged with battery, assault on a pregnant disabled woman, and I sue them for most emotional damage. They also got charged with some other crap that is, is not important for the story. My family got 10 to 25 years in prison, knowing my dad he won't make it past a year. Because he's a pussy and he's currently dying. They thought they were win because I was about to back down. I wasn't even going to press charges on them, because that's how broken I am. But they don't know something. The more and more I recognized how these morons did to me was wrong, the more and more I want to watch them burn. If anyone is curious about my father's other children, Pablo is now Papi Aloa and she lives with her now wife and her beautiful kids, and which is on her 10th baby daddy, and her children hate her more than I do. My twin sister is blaming me because I took with her family. Her husband is also getting a divorce, and I'm about to go take a nap. Okay, this event took place before the pandemic. I had worked at this job at least six years before I finally left its toxic environment. Yet, yeah, I got along with just about all of my coworkers. I also, won't lie, live with my mom. Which I will only say, this is because of a couple things. My stepdad passed away from lung cancer in 2018, having passed seven months after he was diagnosed. In 2019, she and I got the house we currently live in. Now, when this event took place... I worked nights at my job at the time. I would normally be home around 6 a.m. due to not driving at the time, and it was too cold for me to use my e-bike so I would get rides from co-workers or bike depending on the weather. This is also Canada, so it can get cold. My asthma makes it hard to bike in cold weather. This was my day off, so I was hoping to just relax and just sleep. Though that wasn't meant to happen, it seemed as I was woken up by some sound above me. I live in the basement at my house as it's a finished basement and my bedroom is under the living room of the house. But I just chalked it up to mom watching some TV. So, I get out of bed and go to grab my mom's bedding that was in the dryer. As I was getting up the stairs and open the door, that was when I see the dog. Another thing I should point out, the dog Buddy was my stepdad's dog, who as he would call Buddy was his furry son. This dog kept my mom sane when my stepdad passed away and was always comforted by this dog and everything that came into her life. We had Buddy three years after my stepdad passed before he was diagnosed with lung cancer like my stepdad. We still miss this dog. Now, it was strange for me to see this dog in the kitchen. Basement door leads into the kitchen, instead of the living room or my mom's room. It was practically glued to my mom's side. So, 
I asked, what are you doing out here, buddy? He's just wagging his tail at me, so I go toward the living room door and saw that the door was shut. Again, that confuses me, so I just mentally shrug and open the door. Hey, Mom, I'm bringing up your... I stop when I see a very familiar face on the couch with my mom. O-O-P. This is... I know who he is, Mom, I said. It wasn't clicking in for me as to what was going on. Because again, I just woke up from doing a close and didn't really get a hell of a lot of sleep. How do you know him? She asked. The guy's eyes were wide since I walked into the living room. I work with his wife. Mom is in confusion and kind of leans back a little looking at the man. Asking, your ex-wife? She seemed a little skeptical. Before he could even answer, I said, no, his current wife. Insert co-worker's name. Mom, of course, is in shock, and again, I don't clue in as to what was going on. Just talking as I walk further into the living room with her bedding and set it on a chair. I pet Buddy and make sure he goes outside to do his thing, and then I go back to my living room in the basement. The guy was kicked out a while later, though beforehand he had begged my mom to tell me not to tell his wife about this because she's possessive. So, for months I kept my mouth shut. Though, that wasn't the only thing she told me. She had told me that the reason why Buddy was kept out of the living room was because Mom, this guy, let's call him Jay, walked into the house Buddy actually growled D, actually growled D at him. This dog who loves everyone he meets, growled at someone. That alone shocked me when my mom told me this. Well, that and it turns out that Jay also knew my mom's cousin and her cousin's husband. They went to high school together. Only found that out when mom mentioned that was part of their conversation before I came up the stairs. When mom also told me that he was there because they met on Tinder and that this was a date, oh how I wish that I knew sooner. I would have kicked his ass out the door myself, because if there was one thing I hated, it was cheaters. My mom had been cheated on before, and she hates them, so she was thankful that I came up when I did. There is still more to this story. As I said, I kept my mouth shut for months on not telling my co-worker. Let's call her L. well months after this AIDS happened. I was working with her. As we worked, I had heard her saying that she was being kicked out of her townhouse. I was confused and asked what happened. Elle told some of us that Jay tried to overdose and she had managed to get help in time to save him. So, she had pretty much saved his life. Yet, how does he repay her? By trying to get her kicked out of the house. So, when I heard that I'm just like, screw this, no repercussions, then I told her everything that happened, how he met my mom, to him being at my house, to when I came up, everything. When I was done... She just stared at me. A mix of shock as well as, well, I'm not really sure what this other look was, but she looked like this had happened before. Which, she confirmed. Turns out Jay cheated on her throughout their entire marriage. They have five kids. Her oldest is at least 20s or 30s, I don't remember. Also, he was the possessive one, not one. Whenever they separated, he was always allowed to see other people but not her and made damn sure of that. Once she had everything I told her, she had finally been pushed because with what I told her, it seemed that it was far worse than what he's done in the past. Their marriage was just toxic from what I learned later on. Not just with destroying her property, such as her phone, but he hacked into her Facebook to make posts. I don't know all the details, but what I do know is that there is now a restraining order against him. He even tried to tear her down by saying that no man would want her because she was used and old, mind you. She is an old, she's still young and has a lot of life in her. Then told her that she's too old to get into a union job. But she proved him wrong on all accounts. Got herself a good man, got a good paying job now, and she even lost weight. Hell, she's doing a damn good job living her life right now. But there was one thing that I had asked her after I told her everything. Hell, you said I look just like my mom, right? I had asked. She said, yes, you do. I had posted pics of me with my mom Facebook from my mom's 50th birthday, and Elle had commented just how much my mom and I look alike. I'm her clone, to say the least, (laughs) haha. Her husband had met me many times in the past because he would sometimes bring Elle coffee or bring her the debit card that she forgot. So, how is it that your husband didn't even notice how much I look like my mom when he met her? I asked. Her words. I can't help but smile at the thought of such a thing. Because he's a damn idiot. I laughed a little at that. Even their son, who also worked with us, told me that his dad isn't that smart, bright. 
So you can tell that it had to be true if his own wife, now ex-wife, and son tell me the same thing. When I had even told L how he knew my mom's cousin and her husband, L had told me that it was most likely that he would have tried to get lucky with her as well. Though that wasn't going to happen anyway, because my mom's cousin is still very much in love with her husband's high school sweetheart. So, this guy tried to get lucky, only for it to ruin his marriage. Karma in its finest. But I still wished I had said something to her sooner. I won't lie. That is my only regret with this, but I'm at least happy that she got out of that toxic marriage. Now living her best life without that jackass. This is one of my favorite stories to tell, so I'm sharing my first ever post here. Hope you enjoy for the entertainment value. What is the underlying entitlement? The thrill of harassing retail worker. Just being an arsehole because you can. Seeing what one can get for less or free. This also has a bit of petty revenge mingled in from a retail hell stand tonight. Story is now about 15 years old, so the specific details, prices, are quite faded at this point and are made up but close enough. My family and I were wrapping up a week-long trip to Disney World staying at the boardwalk. Teenage kids were in the park. My parents, husband, and I were in the room doing laundry and packing up for the flight home the next day. I have yet to treat myself this trip and haven't had any ice cream. Husband agrees for the need, so the two of us head down to the boardwalk sweet shop. As luck would have it, the store was thankfully not crowded. It was fairly late, with one couple in line in front of us already being helped and husband and I queue up behind them. There are three employees working behind the counter, and all seem to be totally preoccupied by the couple in front. This is a mid-to-late 40s white American man and woman. Both well-groomed, neatly dressed in what I would describe as preppy with polos, sweaters tied around necks, boat shoes. The guy was wearing a Boston Red Sox hat. She has a nice handbag. Definitely seem to be vacationers like us. We will call them Karen and Ken for ease of storytelling. I notice that Ken is a bit agitated and is shuffling about nervously looking from Karen, then back to me, then to the store employees and back again. It's at this point I start to pay attention to the conversation in front of me. Karen is trying to negotiate the price of an ice cream cone. In Disney World, I mean... If you need to get a discount on a dessert, maybe you don't go to Disney. We certainly aren't wealthy and save for the trip, but 25 cents off an ice cream cone isn't life-changing in these circumstances. Karen, how much for a cone, one scoop? Employee, still $3.50. Karen, what about $3.25? Employee, no. Kenan, shift stance repeatedly, Karen. If I get two scoops, can I get it at the same price? Employee. No, it would be more. Ken. Glances back awkwardly, Karen. What about one scoop in a cup? Employee. Still $3.50. Karen. Can I get it for $2.50? It's at this point I realize this has been going on for a while, way before we got there, and has continued for a good five minutes since we arrived. All three employees are just staring at Karen and her antics quite like a deer caught in headlights. Ken looks like he's going to stroke. My husband at this point bails on me. He, zero patience, doesn't need ice cream that badly and has said so before leaving. Me, on the other hand, am stubborn and completely fascinated by people watching in relationship dynamics. The laundry can wait. And I really wanted ice cream. Ken seems to be out of his league. He's more geek and less handsome than she is pretty. What's the basis of this relationship? Is it more about marrying for money or status versus love or affection? What's so important about a discount? There doesn't appear to be a financial need. I mean, I'm not adverse to helping out when warranted or appreciated. Why the hard sell? So many questions. Finally, one of the employees, oldest of the three males, manager or owner, Finally snaps out of the Karen show trance and realizes there is another customer to ask me what I want. The other two employees are still trying to serve Karen, Ken, and I have to step between them to be handed my cone as they are blocking the register area. I am about a foot away from Karen. Me. Thank you. How much? Employee owner. For you, no charge. Karen. Snaps head around to angrily stare in my face me. Takes long lick of ice cream Karen, seething me. 
Thank you so much. Entitlement should never get you free ice cream, but sometimes kindness, patience, and a bit of stubbornness will. So this is something that I can finally talk about, because everything is done now pretty much. So there's only one real character in this story, and that's Adult Bully, who we'll call a B for short. Now A.B. was basically a thug who had just gotten out of prison only a couple of months prior to getting on a course to get work on the railways. Now I won't hold his prison time against him as he made a mistake earlier in life, and he was on the course to begin again with an honest living one should assume. However, one thing that he forgot about this course, he might need to use his brain. So when he was in college on this course, he struggled when he wasn't walked through it by the lecturer, despite already doing a course similar in prison. Me, I didn't need it. After a while, I managed to excel in the class enough to help other members of the class. He didn't like that. So what can this big man do to make sure that I know my place? Well, at first he tried verbally threatening me. I didn't even raise an eyebrow. After 12 years in retail being threatened, robbed, and attacked by all manner of assholes, I'm not easy to face for sure. So his verbal communication skills are failing. Maybe I'll flinch if he makes it look like he's going to hurt me. Three tries and nothing but a clenched fist and a thousand-yard stare. So that's not a good idea I might get hurt. How about sneaking up on me and hurting me like that? Well, here's that story. I'm there going through things with my lecturer when he decides he's going to reposition himself close behind me. My lecturer has nipped to the loo, so now's his chance. He pulls my hoodie over my head and then wraps the strings around my neck. He was strangling me for a good minute before I struck back in the form of an elbow into his gut. This winded him in my second move is to slam his face into the table for good measure. To this, his response was to cry about how unfair it was for me to hit him back while he was trying to choke me to death. I told him then and there that I always knew that he was a whiny little bitch and I was going to deal with him once and for all. I made sure that the lecturer knew, the police knew, the job center knew, and his parole officer knew. He tried claiming that it was self-defense after I'd assaulted him, but his reputation in the class was terrible, and he was not getting much help. Whilst his other defense of it was a joke that no one understands was used to lessen his charges, he was about to get a community order before his parole officer stepped in. The parole officer was going to have a chat with him before he decided to assault him too. The investigating officer on my case who was going to cut him a break ended up putting him in for a higher charge because of the parole officer being assaulted and his pattern of violence. He was inside prison for 14 years and after six months out on parole was possibly about to face another 20 years because he wanted to prove he was a tough guy. In my opinion, good riddance to him. He was a thug trying to prove that he was Charlie Bronson and in the end all he proved was he was a wit. He felt after everything he was entitled to attack me and I would not allow to fight back in his mind. Can't wait to see him in court and laugh at him as he goes down for however long he does. The kicker is because of the timing of his arrest, he missed the qualifying test that was the whole point of the course. So if he wants to do it all over again, he has to pay for it himself, which will cost him piss two thousand easy. Sucks to be him. Enjoying the stories yet? If you do, please subscribe, like, and comment. I know I posted about situations with this friend. With this, I don't know what to do. I feel bad for my friend and I'm worried about her. But I don't know what else to do with her compulsive lying. My friend has a tendency of telling stories, and I just assume she is dramatic. But I noticed her lies started to get bigger. Her lies seemed to range from she was supposed to get a dog, and that she took all the steps to get a dog just for it not to happen. Another time she claimed she had a miscarriage, and then said a few days later it was just my period. She also always tells me that guys come into her work just to flirt with her, and that men always approach her, ask for her number, and try to ask her out. She has also said that she feels like she's the one that got away from most men. I mean, that's a big claim to make. There's a lot of interesting lies or stories she has told me over the cost of our friendship. She's in a toxic on-and-off-again relationship. They are a match made in hell. She has told me her boyfriend was cheating on her with a lesbian, and she made these claims for a while. Regarding cheating, she has said he was going to cheat on her during her birthday. With all the cheating, they always seem to get back together. My friend has a very traumatic and sad upbringing. Her parents are in the U.S., undocumented, 
Her uncle sexually abused her as a child up unfit she was a teenager, and her family always had a money problem. The majority of money my friend makes has to go to her parents. She's even dropped out of college semesters to help her parents out financially. But with all these money problems, she buys her boyfriend everything, plus more. She's even spent around $2,000 on his Christmas and birthday gift. When I told her that's not a good idea, she would tell me that I need to understand that's how she shows her love. She spends so much money on him just for him to be horrible to her in return. We have another friend that we also hang out with. She's mostly my friend since I've known her longer and I introduced them. My other friend, I'll refer to as P, told me that my friend, I'll refer to as J, told her that she's no longer with the boyfriend. I was surprised because not once has she told me that they broke up. In shock, I told P, they are still together, and she said that J also told her they're just friends and she only joins the boyfriend and the family to go to church with them. Jay's dad stepped out on his family back in January and to move back to Mexico. It's been really hard on her, which is understandable. Jay told P that her mom, brother, and herself are moving to South Carolina if the dad doesn't come back. Hmm, she never told me this? My brother once joined us for a hangout, and I expressed to him my concerns with Jay's line about her relationship. He said he's going to find a good way to put her on the spot. During the hangout, my brother asked her in front of P, how's it going with you and your boyfriend? Things turned awkward fast when she said that they were broken up. I asked Jay a little while later of why did she lie to my brother and P. She said that she felt like the relationship isn't going to last that long, so there's no need to say anything. I told her that's bullcrap because no matter what this guy does, they never break up. The other night, Jay told me that she's upset with her aunt. Jay said that her aunt knows how much she loves K-pop and K-dramas, so she told her daughter to get a Korean boyfriend. I think that's too weird, my fiancé. He's Korean, and I tried telling Jay that I doubt that's the case and told her. Jay then told me that her aunt is totally doing this to spite her, that she's happy with her boyfriend, and she doesn't want a Korean man. I told her that I really don't believe this, plus she's making it sound like Korean men are accessories, but she followed it up by saying that she had every opportunity to be with a Korean man, and chose not to. I am completely shocked to hear the extent she's going to lie. Anytime she tells me anything, I can't seem to believe anything she says, and that's a horrible feeling. Everything that comes out her mouth feels like a lie. Either she's lying to me about the relationship and they are just friends, or she's lying to P and they are still together. I don't know, is she a compulsive liar? Hello, I remembered this gem from a few years ago and think this will be perfect for this channel. Also, apologies for this being so long. So much happened here that I just remembered. Also, I'm a junior in high school, currently on summer break, about to be a senior. This happened back in 2019 when I was in 6th grade summer break, going on to 7th grade. On that day, I was invited to a pool party for my dad's friend's daughter returned from vacation in Mexico with her grandmother. We'll call the daughter E.D., entitled Daughter. Well, A.D. was just returning and wanted to go swimming. She just got a pool built in her backyard that looked identical to mine. Just hers had a hot tub. Ours did not. I expected to just go to E.M. house entitled Mom, because she lived next door. Turns out the party wasn't at her house. I assumed this meant we would be going to a friend's house in the neighborhood, but no. We all hopped into the car to head to the public pool. I was cool with it. Thankfully, my mom gave me money for food just in case the pool party wasn't at somebody's house. We get to the pool just for EM to expect us to pay for our own bracelets. I'm cool with it due to having my own money, but I was confused. I assumed since she invited us out, she was paying for us. I pay for my ticket, but I turn to see my friends. I'll call them Esmeralda and Ashley. Esmeralda is the younger one of the sisters close to AD age, and the older sister, Ashley, is about my age. They both didn't bring any money because we thought we were swimming at somebody's house and not a public pool. E.M. started scolding them and paid mumbling about how their mom owes them now. Isabella, the youngest there, paid for herself because her family had gave her money. Lastly, E.D., older cousin by three years, was paid for only because his family and his mom was sending money to his aunt when he stayed there. So we finally get in, and I'm really hungry and decided I'm going to eat first because I skipped breakfast, I think. I got a lot of food due to my mom giving me $20. From what I remember, I got a hot dog, some chips, ice cream, and slushy. I understand how crazy it was that I ate that, but I had some issues at the time at home. To sum it, because I don't feel like getting too into it basically to sum it up, 
I ate whatever I wanted when I wasn't home because my family was controlling over food. I also had health issues that made me eat more plus medication. Anyways, EM looked at me in disgust and said you shouldn't eat all that because she wandered off. I knew what she was trying to say, but she remembered that my dad is friends with her fiancé, and if she said what she was planning to say, it can cause issues. So she remembered something that she thought would work. She said your mom wouldn't be okay with you eating all that I responded, but I don't recall what it was that I told her. I got into the pool after eating and played in the water for a bit. Every time I lightly splashed my friend Ashley or EDM would get mad and yell at me and Ashley because we were the oldest and should act our age. We were also then expected to watch the little kids and follow them around. Neem and Ashley didn't want to, but did so because it got embarrassing being starred at by everyone when EM would yell at us. Neem and Ashley barely got to do what we wanted in the pool, mind you, me and Ashley are in 6th and 7th grade watching a 4th grader, 3rd grader, and a 2nd grader. Instead of enjoying the pool... If me and Ashley knew we were going to be used as unpaid babysitters, we would have stayed home and swam at my house. The kids got out of the pool because they got hungry. So we followed. I also wanted a popsicle because it hit 103 days at that time. When we first got to the pool, it was about 95 days. EM side-eyed me and said, you don't need any more food because I ate four hours ago. We were at this pool for about nine hours in total. I said, I know, but I just want a popsicle. So she allowed me to take my coin purse back and buy one. At first she said I have to give the other kids the rest of my money so they can eat. I lied and said popsicles were two dollars and I only have two left. Ian got upset and scolded me saying I shouldn't have gotten all that food and now the other wouldn't get to eat. I brought my own money and so did Isabella. Ian pulled out five dollars and told them to share. But when Isabella refused the money saying she had her own Ian asked how much she had, and she said she had 30 or $40, but her mom said it's only for her and to return the rest to her mom. EM took back her five and said Isabella has to pay for all the kids because she has the most money and her mom would be fine with it. Also, EM never paid back Isabella's mom. The kids cost her $30. I got a popsicle, and I bought the last Sour Patch Kids, which was for my older brother because he was summer nice to me that week. I enjoyed two popsicles and placed the candy in my bag secretly because I didn't want to let the other kids see the candy. EM shamed Jack, Isabella, E.D., and Esmeralda for what they got. I shared with Ashley some of my food because we were super close. EM was mad that I didn't share with her daughter, E.D. We went swimming again afterwards and came back a few hours later to EM complaining about random stuff then wanting to leave. So we packed up our stuff and Ashley was complaining about hunger to me quietly to not be scolded by EM for not making Isabella pay for her meal. So I gave her a few Sour Patch Kids because I accidentally opened the box when I grabbed my clothes. I put the box back quietly and then I turned to EM who was shaming me for buying candy and not sharing with the other kids. She then says, OP, you need to share with the other kids because you ate enough for today. When the other kids heard I had candy, they all ran up begging for candy. When I tried to explain to EM the candy is mainly for my brother, she accused me of lying and said I had to share. The kids ran to my bag and excited for candy, and EM took the candy from my bag and shared it between all the kids. After give the kids handfuls of candy, she gave me and Ashley three pieces each for being greedy. The only thing that kept me looking forward to this day was going to pick up ice cream at an ice cream shop. As soon as we got close, though, EM said we don't deserve ice cream and said we will get some at her house. As soon as we get there, we got mini Otter Pops. Ashley declined because she wanted ice cream and went home to get some from her house. Everyone else, shockingly enough, including me, got an otter pop. Only half, though, because we didn't deserve a full otter pop. It was also the mini otter pops. I went home disappointed, but didn't tell my parents for fear of getting in trouble for the food I ate. I was on the last flight of a long trip and ready to pass out for two and a half hours. That changed when my seatmate thumped into his spot. Let's call him Bill. Bill is in his 60s and speaks about five decibels too loud. His tablet font is so big the guys in air traffic control can probably read it through the plane window. Bill settles in and begins watching videos on his tablet while the flight attendants do the pre-flight demonstrations. The videos are far-right politics on nature and the sound on the tablet is maxed. The flight attendant tells Bill you'll need to wear headphones or earbuds or put that on mute, sir. At first, it seems like Bill complies. The sound is off and we get into the air. When we reach flying altitude and the Wi-Fi comes on, he's back on YouTube with his videos at full volume. 
The flight attendant rolls his eyes and repeats he will have to put on headphones or mute. Bill sits up straight and exudes obstinate entitlement. I can't wear headphones. They hurt my ears and I'm not missing the debates. You will have to mute it and put captions on so you don't disturb the other passengers. With a smug smirk, Bull says it's his right to watch the debates, and this is the only way he can. If anyone else hears, they should be listening as voters and learning. The flight attendant gives Bill a long look and returns to the front of the plane. Two minutes later, an announcement was made that due to electronic issues, the Wi-Fi won't be available on this flight. Bill huffed and puffed about this and complained bitterly to his wife. He was snoring most of the flight, and the attendant told him to bring his complaints about no Wi-Fi to the ticket counter. Two policemen were hanging out there as I passed. I hope they were there to educate Bill on in flight rules and the consequences of not following them. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more captivating stories. Share your own experiences, opinions in the comments below, and let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay tuned for more epic tales.